She kept in the sentiment that there's not going to be another giant squeeze. In her opinion, it's going to be less likely. Okay. Even the original question asker was uh, edited and said, I appreciate it and respect your answer. Also agree with this person in that Alexis hasn't really familiarized herself with the Jamie DB. She didn't even know what the mother of all short squeezes meant, right? So which is definitely understandable. She doesn't have infinite amounts of time for us. What I'm saying is don't get depressed just because she doesn't believe in the mother of all short squeezes. Who of us did before reading the DD about it? Hoddle. Okay, so it's a good time to remind you that we're just here objectively trying to analyze what is coming out here. And not only does friend of the show uh, Rensel, moderator on RGME, have thoughts about this, but we have Warden Elite sending me his analysis yesterday of a uh, options analysis regarding what she said uh, uh, specifically about implied volatility and the options chain itself. Uh, and why he believes that we are actually positioned for a short squeeze now better than we were in January. So we're seeing both sides, right? We're seeing someone who is a senior policy advisor, but perhaps she does not uh, ca get caught up with the DD for better or worse, right? Maybe she's busy or maybe the DD that we're reading is too bullish. And this is the most important piece to understand is that we are providing you objective information here. Nobody's trying to pump the stock. Nobody's trying to tell you to sell, buy or hold. So. Once more, this is where we're going to go with both of these, right? This is a quite a lengthy one, so we might actually skip through a good amount of it, but be sure that you understand what is going through this video. So Rensel's thoughts first. Hey everyone, I know I'm getting pinged. I thought of, of instead of replying to each and every one of those, I just post this. I will, however, keep it short as I'm not feeling well. Oh no, Rensel, feel better, please. So before we have some people paper hand, let's look at some logical reasons why this may have been her response. All right, we just saw her response. This is the same link that we just read. Liability. She, if she said, yes, 100% will happen, what do you think would happen? She's a financial expert, and the moment she would say something like that, you would have two different plays. Number one, she's a catalyst, and the firms will go after her, and I imagine a lot of more other people are going to go after her as well, right? Scarier, legally, stuff. Uh, number two, she would say it and, it, and it won't happen in the foreseeable future, and all the people invested in GME after she said it would happen could sue her for misleading people, right? This is why we are... Uh, like building out a better channel if you guys heard that announcement already about how we are changing the channel forward i'm not going to uh, like verbatim tell you the news without giving you at the very least a piece of objective an analysis from my side and i agree with this like logical compartmentalization that Renzo is building here right we have many reasons why she does not want to be able to be a target uh, to be someone who is blindly saying this will happen right however i do think that she made herself uh, into a, a spokesperson, whether she wanted to or not, by coming onto this AMA, and then she had an obligation to, at the very least, not take a strong side on either side. And I think that it's not likely that her language was strong to the extent that it makes people feel more bearish than she might realize in her position. So that's why I'm going to take very, very careful and just explain to you my analysis of her thoughts, okay? Because I understand my position as well. Number three, people would hear a financial expert say this and they would FOMO in and cause a FOMO wave never seen before. And that's why we get scissors in the chat. We don't want this to happen, right? We don't want someone like in her position to say, yeah, it's going to happen. Then we get a bunch of paper hands in here who would just want to get in on the money, not the actual project, the goal, the, the big money that we actually all care about. Four, after GME, I don't think we would ever be in a situation like this ever again. Lots of people said this is a once in a lifetime opportunity, and I think they are right. If you look back on 2008, what did you think happened to Michael Burry? He was pestered for years by the SEC and FBI, as was everyone else who foresaw that happen. So can you think of a reason why both Mr. Kelleher and Ms. Goldstein may be careful with the words they use and write? Yeah, that is 100% the kind of situation that I have to think about all the time. Meatball is getting more focus from the autofocus than I am. I'm jealous. Go and do your own DD, right? There you go. So that's Rensel's idea. It's very, very good. Uh, it is essentially, what do you think she, what kind of options do you think she had, right? Do you think that she had the ability to be like, yeah, 100%? However, that is, once more, a, a easy way to play it off in your brain, right? And I don't want you to play it off in your brain. I want you to put it in your brain that Alexis Goldstein 
is not bullish on another short squeeze. Uh, another mother of all short squeeze is coming. Uh, so, but she does think that volatility will continue. Let's see what uh, Warden Elite has to say. And then I, I applaud you guys for getting this far in this video. So thank you guys so much. And let's focus up and see a counter argument to why we are actually better positioned now than in January. Right? Not financial advice, of course. Hey, it's Warden here. Uh, he spent his Friday night writing this article, sent it over to me. Uh, very cool of him. So he's a boss. Let's talk about the gamma squeeze possibility. First off, she seemed to reference the same thing I referenced in the past. Options, premiums on GME implied volatility are through the roof, right? And they assume they will be going on for some time. Option sellers are going to demand a major premium for taking on risk of it going haywire again. So these are her words. <clears throat> This is the main rhetoric for why a gamma squeeze cannot happen. For smooth brains, call options are extremely expensive because of high implied volatility. High IV leads to higher premiums. For a gamma squeeze to happen, you need to have a lot of buy. Excuse me. You need to be able to buy lots of call options quickly and cheaply. Let's take out Mr. Whiteboard and explain this. What is implied volatility? What is the uh, what is the gamma squeeze and why is a high IV unlikely to provide a gamma squeeze? The gamma squeeze we've covered so many times before and it's the idea that you currently want to set a date and time for the stock movement. You want to be able to see what's going on in the, in the chat here. Uh, do not spam guys. So we you a call option is the idea that currently the stock is like over here. Whoa, right? And you are drawing a line here to the uh, the x-axis. This is time. This is price. <clears throat> You're saying at some point the price of the stock is going to rise above this line before I get to this line. This is when the contract expires. And this is the strike price. Hey, we just figured out a call option. You are trying to get this price of the stock higher than this SP before the exp expiration date. Right, I'll call this ED. So now you understand that the crazier this graph is, <laughs> I, know, I, I know a chart can't look like that, but the crazier it is, the higher chance it is that this actually happens, right? So with greater volatility, uh, a person that sells you the option to be able to take this bet is going to charge more. So with less of these options being bought, there is going to be less chance that we have the snowball effect of being able to have a multiple call option. So now that you understand what that is, an individual call option, you can look at prices here as, oh, thank you so much, uh, eraser from the gods. So this is the options chain that we have seen multiple times, right? This is uh, leading up to where these are all out of the money. For, let's say, for example, so these are $200 call options all the way up to $800 call options, right? As we start to roll over, if we have a good amount of calls, then we are going to start picking up price. And the people that most important piece of the gamma squeeze is that people are going to delta hedge. And by delta hedging, they are buying the stocks in advance so that they can sell it to you at this price point instead of waiting and then having to sell it to you at this price point, right? They can't take that much risk because once again of the high IV, they have to delta hedge. So they have to delta hedge. The volatility is crazy high. And now they are going, this is, if there's enough of these bars, all of these are call options. This is the option chain. Enough of this snow on the ground allows us to track further. And unfortunately, with this uh, volatility and the high price of it, we're not going to have enough of these bars. So if, if smooth brain still needs a banana, just understand that right now uh, the gamma squeeze needs cheap options. And we're not going to likely see that because who in their right mind is going to be accidentally uh, having to pay for a gamma squeeze? The simplest way that I can explain it is let's say that uh, we are currently playing insurance, like insurance salesmen with crazy rock stars going to a hotel room. They're likely going to crash it. Who's going to want to pay for that insurance, right? The people selling contracts 
they're going to charge through the roof. And just by that fact, we're likely not going to see um, a lot of rock stars trash a lot of hotel rooms because they, the insurance is going to be too expensive. Okay, we've uh, we've actually seen significant IV crush this past week, right? IV is just it getting lower week after week. The IV has settled down and prices for calls has gotten cheaper. So what I just described was Alexis Goldstein's idea, and what uh, Warden is trying to say is that IV is actually dropping since uh, and getting cheaper and cheaper, which would allow us to be able to get more and more call options in that options chain. The Scion line. Let's look at this little chart here. The Scion line at the bottom is implied volatility. Notice how it's going down over time. As you can see, we have settled back down to the IV from before the 224 climb. In fact, we've increased the price fourfold while decreasing IV. That is extremely impressive and evidence that bulls have very good control over the recent run-up. Okay, uh, so we're going to skip a little bit, but that's the idea that IV is actually decreasing. Look at the data. Uh, they believe that bulls are building that launch pad and it is near completion. They believe that gamma squeeze is once again possible in the near future. Okay, so because IV is dropping, we need to see, once again, we're keeping our eye on that option chain every single day of the market. So if we start to see more and more snow on the ground for that snowball to roll through, that is a bullish sign for sure. Uh... Okay, I'm going to uh, just try and dissect this here. Is the short interest still high? Uh, Alexis Goldstein also talked about this. She wants to stress that she doesn't have a crystal ball. Right, We just read this. Uh, I think that enough shorts got burned that people are more cautious now than they were before, and anyone selling options on GME are demanding very high premiums for taking that risk. Makes sense. Uh, my thoughts are, how can you get burned if you haven't covered? because we know that there's still so many shorts, so many short positions, not just naked shorts and covered shorts, but you can have a married put conversion, right? There's a lot of different ways that you can be short a stock, as in just um, holding a position that is inverse to a long position, right? So right now we are seeing retailers have an asymmetric opportunity. They lose nothing by holding while the shorts lose from interest and options premium. So not only did Warden show us the IV in the beginning, but now that we uh, we now have data and psychology it doesn't cost the retailers anything to hold uh from an actual like accounting standpoint in money out money right so if for you you will have unrealized losses if the stock falls you will have unrealized gains if the stock rises but it doesn't cost you a dollar to hold is what warden is trying to say uh let's see he in fact believes that it's still extremely high over a hundred percent we've talked about why that uh, that calculation is go check out some other videos down in this channel if you guys haven't yet already about why uh, let's see why would they need to reset FTDs if SI is low this is one of the most important videos that you need to understand the FTD cyclicality right that's one of the newest videos that I uploaded it's called like must watch if you have AMC or GME the uh, DTCC 005 rule there, I explain exactly what the cyclical nature of FTDs are, and that was the, the beautiful little picture I had on this whiteboard before I erased it, so uh, RIP whiteboard. What about institutional ownership in the Bloomberg terminal? It shows before January, it was 194%, now it's 130%, right? So it's probably a little bit higher. Uh, I think they moved the 9 million shares to a different alias. Okay, so this is just a couple of afterthoughts here. Are long institutions still in it as retail holding, right? We've talked about uh, the whales, short whales, because of the, the bad guys, right? The Citadel and the Melvins of the world, but also long whales, right? Who are the people that are the guardian angels for us? Let's, let's try to find out. Uh, retail has been FOMOing in, but with diamond hands, people aren't selling. The decrease in institutional ownership doesn't concern me because they see 64% gap was filled by retail in the recent run-up. So right here, he has drawn a, a very light red box here, and this run-up that he believes, starting all the way back, I'm, let me see if I can recognize this chart here. Uh, this is the gamma squeeze in March. Wow, I'm starting to really live, breathe, and, and eat this stuff. So he believes that this uh, squeeze started off with retail buying in. We've seen his analysis before, and he still strongly believes that. So we ha we own the float right now, according to this hypothesis, right? We are the whale. Uh, let me see if there's any main points here. Possible catalyst in April, right? Likely that we are going to want to check this out here. Uh, they believe that there are plenty of catalysts coming in April. If you have the share recall, right, the same shares that are recalled will 
also happen to be shorted. Those shares must be covered and there will be a short squeeze. Okay, this sentence is a little bit simplistic, simplistic. However, I understand where you're going for. Let's not forget about April 4th. Uh, 2020 during this last share recall, SI was high and the stock skyrocketed from six dollars uh, to six dollars from a dip of 250. I believe uh, if that kind of proportion happened again, right, like barely a two, three hundred percent increase, people are not going to think that that's the mother of all short squeezes. But I understand the sentiment here, right? That there was a share recall basically around this exact time last year, and SI was high back then as well. Okay, let's see. Making some really good points, some excellent DD. Uh, let's see. Uh, plan to talk about statistics, variance, and comparing VWAP across exchanges on his Monday stream. Heck yeah! Well, I'm excited for that. Uh, if you, if he also addresses some of the drama here, guys, apes do not fight apes. Make sure that you are being good to each other and go all the way up to the top of this. Give it a fat thumbs up. Hold on, give it a fat thumbs up and understand that all of these resources are going to be in the description below. If you guys have not yet seen the update video on what's going to happen on this channel, go check it out. We have some lofty goals. We have some important steps to cover. But at the end of the day, right, let me give you my two cents. Data is king. Data is 100% what we need to focus on here. We None of us should ever be in a position where people are... are able to come up to us, disrespect us and say, hey, you're pumping a stock that you don't know anything about. We know more about this stock than I think I know about like the craziest trivia that I know, more than I know about anime, more than I know about like D&D, &D. maybe, I'm not sure, but I know some random knowledge. And this is a stock that I know very, very well. So as we continue learning the fundamental research, right, we're starting to uh, create those building blocks for you, being able to be a technical analysis trader like me and uh, be someone who is taking in objective sources and then playing around with those ideas. This channel is not only about AMC and GME. However, I know you guys are looking for that update. So thank you for staying all the way to the end for this lengthy but very important doubled look at what Alexis Goldstein says, what the logic behind that, thanks, laid out by Rensel, and the data laid out by Warden. Warden and I are gonna be working tirelessly over this weekend, talking over his DD and, and looking through a little bit more about what we should be preparing for Market Open on Monday. And I will see you here. We go bell to bell every single morning of the, uh, the stock market open. And the next time that's gonna be open, enjoy your long weekends, guys, is gonna be on Monday. So. Once again, I really want to thank the people that make this show possible. If you want to see your name on here, I'm uploading, uh, I'm updating this list uh, by Monday. So if you guys want to see your name on this uh, end screen for a whole week, press that join button next to the subscribe button, or go ahead and check out the Patreon link down below. As always, for now, but not for forever, I will see you in the money. Peace. <laughs>